My name is Alex McGregor, and in this video, we're going to learn how to use the OM Systems OM1 for Astro Landscape Photography. Recently, OM Systems has branded themselves as the ultimate adventure camera system. And those adventures often lead to some really dark sky locations. And this little camera has a lot of amazing features that make it a very capable astrophotography camera, despite being a micro four third sensor. So today we're gonna cover settings and tips for total astro beginner photographers, all the way up to the more advanced things this camera is capable of, including putting it on a tracker. Let's jump into the menu and talk about the settings. So first off, we wanna make sure we're setting our uh, shooting mode to RAW. You can shoot RAW plus JPEG if you want, but I recommend always going with RAW. Now, something I like to use is the image review. Some people will like to turn this off if they're doing a series of photos so that there's no lights coming on. I like to leave it on if I'm just doing single photos of the night sky. On the second menu page, you're gonna see your white balance. I like to set my white balance to custom and not autos because you don't want it changing throughout the night and I think 4200 is a nice balance white nice balance white balance for the night sky also on that page you're gonna want to go down to the color space and I like setting it to Adobe RGB on the third page under ISO and noise reduction I like to set my ISO to one stop instead of one third stop EV and also for the noise filter I'm gonna turn that off and have my noise reduction off the next thing you can set is your drive mode. If you have your camera connected to an app or to an intervalometer, you can set your drive mode to single exposure. But if you're going to be pushing the button or tapping the screen to take the photo, set a two second delay on your camera so that any of the wobbles from pushing the button work themselves out and then your image will be exposed. Now on page eight, you have your image stabilization. It's smart to set this all the way to off. Usually this camera is smart enough not to do anything weird under the auto setting, but you never know, can't be too careful. So just set your image stabilization off. Those are the basic menu settings. Now let's talk about your exposure settings. Now because the earth is spinning and the stars are moving relative to our camera's position, we still have to think about setting the appropriate shutter speed to freeze the action and make sure we don't get any star trailing. I have a full video that you can click on right here that explains how to find the right shutter speed, but the really quick version of this is I like to use the rule of 400. The rule of 400 helps us to make sure that no matter which lens we're using, we always have the right shutter speed because the wider your lens, the less effect that star movement is gonna have. The more tight your lens is, the slower or the faster you need your shutter speed. So for tonight, I'm gonna be using the Mzuiko 12 to 40 millimeter lens at 12 millimeters. So I'm gonna punch that into my calculator here and we're gonna do, remember it's a rule of 400, so I'm gonna do 400 divided by our focal length. So in this case, it is 12. And then because I am shooting on a micro four thirds camera, it's essentially half the size of a full frame sensor. So I'm gonna divide this by two. And that gives me a shutter time of 16.6 seconds. So here's where you can play with it. If you want a little more light, maybe bump it up to 20 and you'll have little star trails. If you want really precise stars, drop it down to 15 or 13 seconds to make sure that a 12 millimeter lens is getting the best star shape possible. And you can use that equation for any lens from the seven millimeters all the way up to like a 25 millimeter lens. You just enter 400, divide it by your focal length, and then divide that by two. So now that you have your shutter speed figured out, what do you wanna do with your aperture? Well, on most of these pro zoom lenses, they are really good at f2.8, and you wanna set your lens as wide open as you can. Now, if you're using something like this, which is the 17 millimeter 1.2, I would go ahead and stop it down to maybe 1.8 because it'll clean up the quality of the stars, especially in the corners. Now for your ISO. Now, I like to think of ISO as a volume knob. It doesn't change the light that's reaching your sensor. It just changes how your camera processes, processes the exposure once it's received it. So turning up that volume knob really is the best way of getting 
clean, nice, exposed images, especially at night. So we're gonna be playing around with using ISO 3200 to 6400, especially when we're not using the tracker. When you're out there at night, you want to set it, maybe start at 3200, and then review your photos on the histogram. If they're looking way too dark, you may need to bring your exposure up by adjusting your ISO. ISO 6400 or even 8000 is possible to use with these cameras. So that's the exposure triangle. We want to expose for as long as we can without getting star trails, open our lens basically as wide as we can, and then use our ISO to make up the proper exposure. Now, how do we actually focus on the stars? Well, this is where OM Systems cameras are amazing and way ahead of the rest of the camera industry. These fantastic little cameras actually have a setting that focuses on the stars for you. That's called the Starry Autofocus. Let's activate that by opening our menus and going over to the green menu section and that is for our autofocus. And on page one, it says autofocus mode. There we can set between continuous, tracking, manual, or at the very bottom there is starry autofocus. Now we're gonna be shooting on a tripod, so let's set our starry sky autofocus setting to accuracy. If we were just gonna handhold it, we can set it to speed, but we're using tripods, it's way better. Now if you ever need to quickly change your autofocus settings, you can just hit the OK button and navigate to your settings right there and pop right over to star autofocus. Then I like to set my autofocus box size to the middle setting and move this box around to where it's right over some really brighter section of stars. And then when you're out there at night, you'll just hit your AF on button, wait for your camera to find focus and a green light will flash and then you know you're in good focus. However, this doesn't work every single time, especially if you're shooting a section of the sky that doesn't have a ton of bright stars. So for that, you'll need to set your focus clutch into manual focus, and then you'll need to use your screen on the back of your camera to zoom in to whatever the brightest star you can find is, and then you're gonna slowly fine tune your focus using your focusing ring. So that basically does it for all of the settings. Next, you're gonna wanna find yourself a nice sturdy tripod. For this, I love the Photo Pro Origin Plus tripod. It has a lot of really cool features, and I made this video of it where you can check all of those out. So you got it set up on your tripod, you'll orient it to whatever section of the sky you wanna be photographing, and you'll start taking photos. Now for just doing single exposures, I'm gonna set this to that two second delay, take my shots, and make sure I like how it's looking. Once you've taken your first photo, you wanna make sure that you review it. So zoom in, examine the stars, make sure they're in really nice focus, make sure whatever amount of star trailing you have is to your liking. And then even if you're just taking single exposures and you're not stacking, I'd like to encourage everyone to take several photos in a row. That way, if there's any planes flying through or satellites doing weird stuff, you can find an exposure without those distractions in it and make sure you get the nicest image possible. To set up your camera to take several shots in a row, you're gonna press the top button on the left side, the very furthest one towards the front of the camera. That'll bring up your image sequence menu. If you navigate all the way to the right, you can set up your continuous shooting mode and you can hit info to adjust those settings. So you can set up the timer, so how long it'll wait to take an exposure. I like to go with two seconds. You can set up the number of frames. I think 10 is nice, but even doing three or five will still have the same effect. And then you can set up your interval length. So that's the amount of time in between photos. And then you can choose whether to autofocus. Obviously, we're gonna be setting that to off because we don't want it focusing on the stars once we've locked them in. Now that you know how to set up that interval sequence shooting, that opens up the door to the next way of getting a higher quality image of the night sky. And that is through image stacking. Image stacking works by taking several photos in a row, be it 10, 20, or hundreds, like some of the deep sky photographers do, and using different programs on your computer to stack them to reduce noise. They are able to reduce noise because if you think of like an old TV or like an old AM radio, that static, the noise, is random. 
And it's the same with our images. The noise on our sensors at higher ISOs isn't in the same place every time. It moves around. So when we take several photos in a row, we can tell our computer to ignore the random noise and only preserve the constant signal coming through. There's some programs that are really helpful with this. If you're using a Mac, you can download the program Starry Landscape Stacker. And if you're using a PC, you can download the program Sequitur. These both work in similar ways where you can tell the computer which part of your images are sky, which part of your images are foreground. It will align and stack them for you. And this does go a long way to getting a better image quality. But we're shooting on OM Systems cameras. So there is some stuff in this camera that can actually do a lot of the stacking for you. And that is the handheld high resolution mode. This handheld high re resolution mode takes 12 photos in a row and it will sense the movement in the camera. And if you have your camera pointed mostly to the stars, it'll actually see that the stars are moving, align them and stack them for you in the camera. This has a lot of benefits. One is that it goes from giving you a 20 megapixel to a 50 megapixel image and it will also reduce the noise and give you better dynamic range in the shadows. So this is a really cool feature. To use this, we're gonna open up our menus again. We're going to navigate over to the high res shot under our purple menu. We're gonna turn it on to handheld. And we're gonna set our waiting time to one second. This will allow us to hit the button, your camera waits for a second, then it will take those images. And everything else you wanna set to the same. So whatever your shutter speed, ISO, all of that, you wanna have set to the same settings. And you're gonna point your camera up to where it's getting just mostly the sky with very little or no foreground and wait. It does take a while to take all of those images and process them. But if it does work out, it gives you a really nice file out of the camera. Now, once you got your image of the sky, you can point your tripod down to where it's taking mostly your foreground and take another exposure. Then on the computer in a program like Photoshop, you can align these two images and blend them together. If you need any tips or tricks for that, you can click on this video right here. The next step that we can do to get the best image quality possible is to add a tracking mount. This is the Nomad Tracker from Move Shoot Move. This beautiful little device aligns to the axis that the Earth is rotating on and moves your camera counter to the rotation of the Earth and that keeps the stars still relative to your camera. This allows you to have a much longer exposure up to four, five, six, I've even shot up to 10 minute exposures using this tracker. That allows you to lower your ISO, close down your aperture a few stops and get really high quality images of the stars. Now this adds a lot of complication to your shooting process and it can kind of make things a little less fun when you're out there. But if you're going for maximum image quality, the tracker is the way to go. And then even when you're tracking, I'll still recommend to take several shots in a row to stack them. Because again, airplanes can fly through, clouds can appear, and if you have a lot of images to combine into one, you'll get beautiful, high quality photos. Now, if you're thinking about picking up a lens that's dedicated for astro, I like this one. The 12 to 24 is a nice option. Another really good option is the 17 millimeter 1.2. The aperture being so big lets a lot of good light in. And another wide angle beauty of a lens is the M Zuiko 7 to 14 2.8 super wide lens does a really nice job. You can also look at things like the Laowa 9 millimeter or the M Zuiko 8 millimeter fisheye. These are all good wide fast options. A couple more bits of gear that you might want to get to make your life a little easier is something like this, an intervalometer. OM system makes an intervalometer that can communicate wirelessly with the OM1. That's super nice. But if you don't have that, any one that you plug into the side will do. Another thing is a headlamp. I like a headlamp that has a good red setting. That's because I find that red affects my eyes less at night. If I do need to illuminate something, it's nice and dim and won't ruin my night vision. All right, I'll see you guys out there tonight where we're gonna put all of these different shooting modes to work and then we can compare the results after.
welcome back. If you've gotten this far, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos about cameras or whatever we end up coming out with. And leave me a comment. Let me know you got this far. Let me know if this has helped you out at all. I just spent a couple of nights out with this wonderful little camera taking photos of Orion and the Milky Way with all the different options that this camera offers. So I'm just gonna put the photos on the screen for you to see. You can see here the difference between the single, the stacked, and the tracked and stacked. In my opinion, the tracked and stacked offers the very best image quality, but it isn't the easiest to do. You need the extra gear of a tracker and you need to be able to manipulate things on Photoshop and swap the sky out because when you're tracking, you can't shoot the foreground at the same time. So you have to shoot separate foreground and blend them in Photoshop. So I think it's a really interesting comparison between the tracked images and the stacked images through Starry Landscape Stacker. This shows that the stacked images hold up really nicely and you don't necessarily need to go through all the hassle of adding a tracker to your workflow. Now you may be wondering, what about the handheld high resolution images that I just spent so much time explaining? Well, I ran into a little bit of a hiccup on the first night. If you take a look at this image that I got using the handheld high resolution, you'll see if we zoom in, there are a ton of hot pixels. And this is something that could get super frustrating if you're trying to erase them on Photoshop, especially because with the HHHR mode, it's adjusting things. So it's not just like one hot pixel. You can see it's like this little trail of hot pixels and it's super annoying. But do not worry, there is a way to fix this. In your OM1's menu, all the way into the wrench on page six, there's an option called pixel mapping. And this will tell the camera to recognize where the hot pixels are and erase them in any images that are coming after them. So I did not do my pixel mapping on day one, but before I went out the next morning, I did do that pixel mapping. And you can see that in this image here, there are no hot pixels. So if you do wanna use that handheld high resolution mode, you do probably need to do your pixel mapping regularly. I don't know how often, but it's, it pays to review your images. And if you are seeing on your camera these hot pixels, just hit that pixel mapping option and it did a wonderful job for me at erasing all of those issues. So for comparison, here's the night where we shot Orion, the HHHR versus the stacked and the tracked. And the following morning, I set up in my backyard for some Milky Way photos. Here you can compare the 10 stack versus the handheld high resolution. So that is it. Those are all the examples and the best ways that you can use your OM systems OM1 to take photos of the stars. And what I really got out of it is that just doing single exposures does a decent job. And then stacking them through the software like Sequitur or Starry Landscape Stacker starry landscape stacker can really improve your images so this is a powerful little camera and for anyone who wants to take images of the night sky it is fully capable don't think just because it's a micro four third sensor that it can't see in the dark because we've proven today that it definitely can if you'd like to support this channel you can purchase any gear through the affiliate links down in the description or you can purchase one of these hoodies t-shirts phone cases cosmic colorado is my brand and that goes directly to supporting this content. My name is Alex McGregor, and I'll see you on the next video.